Um, next question, say, uh, you know, you're one of the very few people that have experience in the US and Australia, right? Very, uh, you know, very tara, just the physical distance map, only just, and also what we perceive as uh, culture, the kin right? So, you know, with, with that experience, tell us in terms of well, what's been your, uh, you know, uh, like what's the difference you've seen? To live in Australia was personal work, right? Because um, we actually, I moved here uh, for a firm that I used to work for before we started MTX APAC. A firm that I used to work for, they asked me to come to Australia for two years to uh, establish their business, American right. business in Australia for two years. And that was the gig. That's why I moved mm -hmm. to Australia with my daughter and uh, Trisma kindly agreed to do it for two years, right. Right, right. giving up her, uh, her career as well. Um, mm -hmm. We fell in love with the country for a variety of reasons. Uh, and one is um, uh, uh, the pace and the culture, uh, the closeness to Asia, right? Those are the few things. It matters so much. Oh, it does. Uh, trust me, it does. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then the fourth thing was the Nepalese community. Mm. I kid you not, in Australia, once you step out of, out of my house, Right. Then it's really a chance where you don't meet anyone. Really. Right. Unless I just go out and come right back in. Always Nepali doing one thing or another, right? And that also kind of brought me closer to it. I was like, this is really cool. Uh, so now in professional level, look, uh, US is great for innovation and um, doing things really rapidly, fast, right? Mm. Um, uh, I, 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 we measure it our, our work too by way efficiency factor. It's very hard, and, and purely because in America we work a lot compared to Australia. Yeah. Australia right. we, 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 we we work a lot. I still do because that's in my blood now, right? Uh, but we work a lot. Um, mm. uh, that's what creates efficiency. That's what creates innovation. That's why the Googles and the Facebooks and all of that are in the U.S. Right? It's because it's that country that gives you that. It just teaches you that. And the environment and all of that makes it exactly happen. That, that, right. Right. Yes, but Australia is not quite that. It's different. Mm -hmm. It's very laissez faire, right? right. Um, right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> it has to be more than all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. But but it's so commonly used. It is mm -hmm. so commonly used, and right. what that what that tells you it's compromises, right? Mm -hmm. And for different other other value, other things that they value as, uh, as a country, they value uh, quality of life, um, a different perspective of quality of life. They value spending time outside. Um, uh, they value family time a lot, lot, lot more than what I experienced in the U.S., right? And, and it's so important for the society here. But in a professional level, if you look at that, that actually reduces the efficiency a little bit. But it is what it is. It is right. the way the society is built, and you have to operate within the norms of a uh, of the professional culture that is established, right? Uh, uh, in our community now, let me tear it down to our community, right? Um, uh, in Nepalese community in Australia, which which makes me really inspired by the communities, they do all kind of works, right? And majority of Nepalese uh, in Australia are nurses. Right. Right. Majority of, and, and uh, obviously Australia has a demand, and uh, we fulfill that demand, right? And it's really inspiring from top of the hierarchy to just start, right, in the, in the medical field. Obviously, there are plenty of doctors. In fact, um, uh, a general practitioner closest to me. Um, Dr. Dixit sees Nepali as well, right? So, um, uh, so, so in medical field, we have Nepalese community quite uh, prominently uh, involved. Beyond that, uh, then it's all business. Yeah. Um, outside of medical and uh, aged care, which is like uh, you know caring for older people in that sector, mm -hmm. most of the Nepalese are involved in one or the another type of business. And which is really inspiring because that's what lifts a community up, right? If you look exactly. at it. Uh, so be it restaurants, be it, um, you know, construction company, 
I know a um, Nepali gentleman here whose name is Hansa Sudeep, by the way, um, who lives, doesn't live too far from me. During the height of the COVID and the construction boom in Australia, he was building, I think, 140 houses at the same time. Oh, my God. Right? So that's successful, right? It's not... That's, uh, that's Nepali, scale, right? Yeah, that's scale, right? And Nepalese had universities here in Australia, quite a few, actually, not just one or two private universities or colleges. Um, so, um, I have um, uh, uh, one of the member of our great Nepali diaspora in uh, Adelaide. He uh, runs a company that brings students or foreign students into Australia, not just bringing them into Australia, but also, uh, uh, you know, partnership with the uh, uh, institutions in China, in Sri Lanka, not just in Nepal, in China, Sri Lanka. So he has offices in Hong Kong, Sri Lanka, he operates out of Australia, and he does, he does amazing work of providing opportunities to people from all all part of the world uh, coming into Australia and educating themselves. Right, so really inspiring stories from all different walks of life. Uh, um, and that and that's that's the difference that I saw a little bit. Right, mm. um, our communities, the Nepalese community here, especially in Australia, is more uh, involved in all walks of life, basically. Um, a bluff example, um, I installed solar in my roof for a couple of years ago. Um, the team that came in, I didn't know. I didn't select them to be. I just looked online and found a company who would do the installation, ordered it, and they came in. The whole crew was Nepali, and it was fun. We made oh, tea and went up. <laughs> tea That's and all of that. incredible. Yeah, so so that experience. And last week, I you remember we were planning to uh, you know, do the podcast when I was in Auckland, New Zealand. I was there. Um, morning, I woke up and uh, I think we had a miscommunication. The podcast didn't mm. happen, and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna go have breakfast downstairs." I was in a hotel. Um, I went down, um, really nice um, breakfast area. I was the first guy to walk in, and a nice lady welcomed me, and she had a puli in her nose. So I yeah. immediately thought that she was Nepali, but I just wanted to take it easy for us. Don't go brought out right. speaking Nepali <laughs> uh, head on. Um, but I walked in and then she came in to ask for my order, what I wanted. And then I asked, right. are you Nepali? And not only she was Nepali, but the entire crew that was running that hotel, five-star top-class hotel was Nepa Nepali community, right? So the management and the chef and the um, the management, the cleaning, all all of it was Nepali. So that's what kind of really uh, inspires me in so many levels, right? Because we're doing all kinds of things, leaving uh, our country. You see Nepalis in all walks of life, doing all yeah. kinds of things. So, so that's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm.